Rolling in the deep, I learn coding on the street. You don't need a degree to become a software engineer. How long does it actually take to become a software developer? And how long does it take to actually get your first job? Today I have a comment for you that will actually answer all of those questions and more. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. This is Kazi, also known as Papa Python from cleverprogrammer.com. Now, today I'm gonna read to you that comment, but first of all, I do wanna say this is day seven of the challenge that I've been doing, and this is also video seven, so I'm committed to making one video every day for the next 30 days. Now, as a motivation for you and some accountability for you, I am doing that and letting you know. So if you wanna use this time to code for 30 days, in a row you may do so alongside me and you can tag me and stuff too on Instagram posts and I will reply to you I'm really active on Instagram so my Instagram is right here clever Kazi go to my Instagram add me and then you can actually tag me in your posts of where you're coding every day for let's say 20 minutes 10 minutes 30 minutes whatever it may be all right so let's jump into this video so the, I'm gonna read to you this comment now this comment was made on one of my videos and that video was called how I learned to code in less than two months. Really amazing video, you could check it out. So John Story says, today was my first day as a developer slash programmer slash designer, however you wanna call it. And this video gave me the courage and the strength to start a new career as a self-taught developer. And I just wanna say thank you for the inspiration. It's been a long journey. It took me almost two years, not two months, to get to this point. I started around June or July 2017, and today, January 28th, 2019, was my very first day of my first job in the industry. Just like Les Brown says, one idea can change your life. One idea can turn your entire life around. I come to the same video where everything started, Thank you, Clever Programmer, for the inspiration. So this was a pretty monumental moment and it was a really incredible comment to actually have the privilege to read. And I'm gonna be honest, like when I was actually walking around and I got it, I was somewhere outside, I saw this comment and it brought tears to my eyes. I almost wanted to like cry. I got really teary eyed and I messaged everybody I knew. I made a post on Instagram and everything. And then I sent him a reply as well. I just thought it was so inspiring that he, you know, it came a full circle. The video where he started that gave him that inspiration to actually become a developer. He came back to that video to actually leave that comment. That was really remarkable. And for me, it was like if my YouTube channel had any purpose, like that alone, for example, could be worth it. Even though we have so many people who have similar stories where they became a developer, but even if I could help one person even be inspired to do that and go on that journey, it's like my job is complete. All the blood, sweat, you know, and time and effort I've put into building Clever Programmer is completely worth it. So that was an amazing moment. Now, what do you get out of that comment? That video I made, I pushed for that you could actually become a software developer in two months. You can become a software developer in three months. Um, and I learned to actually code in two months. But in the case of John, it took two years and you know, uh, to actually two years, maybe just a little bit less than two years to really actually get his first job. For everybody, it's gonna take a different amount of time. All right, and now it also has to do with how much time are you actually able to put in. Most people realistically are able to put in a few hours a day, maybe a few hours a week because they have prior commitments, uh, different responsibilities. Some of you might have kids, jobs, bills to pay, things of that nature. For me to actually get my first freelancing client in as little as three months and I share that story, 
it's because I also had no life at that time. I mean, I did, but I also didn't, right? So you have to understand that I personally was living with my parents at the time. I had lots of support. I had a financial safety net. I didn't have kids to take care of. I mean, I was still going to college and I was still working a lot and I had to create time and I still managed my time really well and I was productive. But there were many, 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 many days where, for example, when I wasn't going to college or I had a little bit of break, I had the luxury to spend 15 to 18 hours a day to code. So when I share those thoughts about you can become a software developer in three months or two months, you know, or you can at least get your first job in that time, I feel people take it the wrong way. And I think what they understand from that is that it's actually really easy to become a developer and he's saying that you could do it overnight. And uh, that's actually not what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to tell you is becoming a developer is very hard. If you are looking to do this just as a side income, don't do it because it's going to be really difficult to like there are many other ways you could earn a side income that are much easier. Like for example, look up drop shipping and learn how to use Amazon for that or use Uber or Lyft and it'll be much easier to actually get a job and start making side income. But get into this field if you're fascinated by it, if you find it interesting and if you feel inspired by it, if this is something you can see yourself doing every day. With that said, if you are spending one hour or two hours a day, it's going to take you a long time. And for most people in John's story, it will take two years. So the majority of you by default, statistically speaking, it will take you two years or longer to become a software developer. It's a long, arduous journey. It's exciting and it's amazing. It's beautiful. Like you could tell when he got his first job, like it, was like it made everything worth it for him. But there, it, it is a long path. But if you are able to compress those hours instead of spending them one hour a week or two hours or three hours a week or just one hour a day, if you're able to compress that timeline and just put in a lot more grind time, it is very possible for you to achieve lots of those goals earlier on. Okay, so this is why I push freelancing because the barrier of entry is lower and I was able to start earning an income three to five months into my programming career. I also became really good in that time. And again, the reason was 15 to 18 hours a day of coding. So it makes me a statistical anomaly, but my obsession is crazy. The same thing I did when it came to chess. When I was learning how to play chess, you know, it takes people on average of 10 years to hit the rating of USCF rating of 2000. It took me about three years, three and a half years to actually do that. So what happened is that I didn't, there wasn't any like weird secret that I did. I just had put in a lot of time and energy into it because I loved it and I was just obsessed by it. So your timeline could look, you know, to give you a realistic idea from three months, rare, three months you can get your first freelancing opportunity. I wouldn't even say full-time job. Maybe you could get an internship if you have a lot of connections, right? But you have to push yourself. It is possible. But I want to give you like more statistical facts in this video. So three months, you have the timeline between three months to two to two and a half years where you could become a developer and you could get a job. All right. This is a very realistic. I hate that word realistic, but I know a lot of people want to know what's realistic because they can only do realistic things, especially with their times and responsibilities. So between three months uh, being very aggressive and then two and a half years, because that's plenty of time, you have that window of becoming a software developer. With that said, I also want to tell you that you should pick your language and what you're going to be specializing in because you want to kind of see what's going to be happening two and two and a half years later. And if you look at the predictions and the way different languages grow, it's going to be a very um, major determining factor in what language you should go for. I mean, even though languages aren't that important, the ideas and the, the ideas and what you do with them is more important. But for example, if you pick C++, C sharp, then you might get better at lots of the things that you do with that language. Like for example, let's say you pick up Swift and you start learning 
mobile, mobile development, right? Swift is more predisposed towards uh, mobile development. And if you might spend a lot of time there and then later you're like, I want to become a web developer, you will need to spend a little bit of extra time to then learn the web development skills instead of picking something like JavaScript, let's say right in the start of your journey where you not only learn it, but then you're improving the skill set. So by the time, you know, whether it's six months, one year, two years for you, you have the skill set of being a web developer, right? Because JavaScript is just more predisposed towards web development. You're obviously going to learn, need to learn other languages as you're improving. That's just a natural process, but I'm just saying which language you should kind of push towards a little bit in the start. I personally love Python, this whole channel. I always talk about Python. So I'm obviously going to recommend Python to start off with. And even when you look at the trends and the 2019 predictions and the upcoming years. So let's say if you're starting your journey now and you're kind of a beginner, it might take you one and a half to two years to become a developer. If you follow the realistic timeline in that journey, if you're doing Python web development or Python development in general, just understand that the trend for Python is going really, really high up. And especially with machine learning and lots of data visualization and data analysis, Python is killing it in that regard. And those things are going to be very, very important for AI in the upcoming years. You can expect Python to continuously just be growing at a tremendous rate. I mean, it was Google more than Kim Kardashian in 2018. No, I'm saying. All right. So with that said, I will say have that timeline, have that time frame, so you understand what is going on to compress it, put in lots of hours and have a solid game plan of what you want to be doing instead of haphazardly just picking random tutorials to learn from actually be building projects. And if you are building projects and you're working on a few long term projects and as you learn new concepts, you keep adding them into your projects. You keep taking those projects and putting them up on your GitHub where recruiters and people can see it. If you're focusing on your LinkedIn, your online presence and your resume, and you constantly have all these ways of getting people, getting people's eyes on your project, you can keep compressing that timeline from two years to earlier and earlier and earlier. Another thing I always talk about is also being able to build those relationships and going to local events, local meetups where you could have access to internships and job opportunities long before you actually ever need them. And by the time you're even remotely ready, you have people who you've built relationships with who will think this person is perfect. I can bring this person, train them. I've seen their hard work. I've seen their dedication. I've seen that they love coding and they've been consistent. Let me bring this person in. I can just teach him. Let's say you're doing Python and they have a job opportunity for let's say Java or JavaScript or something in web, web development. They'll just bring you on and teach you that, right? They, they know where your skill set is. They know how long it will take to show you that they also know you're reliable. So you might actually get a job or an internship or a freelancing opportunity just a few months into your career. I hope this gives you an idea and I hope I've provided you with a few tips. I suggest you go back to the part where I gave a few tips and just write them down because they are very, uh, very powerful. And I do want to let you know, I have a program coming out very soon in probably a week or two. It's going to be called earn 1k with Python. And the idea behind that program is to show you the eight steps that I use to become a software developer and get my first job in less than four months in less than three months. All right, right around that timeline. I got my freelancing opportunity and that's where my career started taking off. And I'm going to just distill all these points, give it to you in a very simple, easy to understand fashion. And this course is all about transformation, not information. So there's going to be more stuff for you to do, but it's going to be very results oriented. And each week we build on so that you can then have a strong foundation to become a high income earning software developer, whether that's $60,000 for you, $70,000. But my goal is to give you a very strong foundation to be going towards that six figure mark. And with this program, my hope for you is to 
earn your first $1,000 with Python, and then hopefully that'll give you enough momentum to keep going and growing a lot faster. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love your face. And if you want to get emails about my upcoming course, which is going to be coming soon, and you want to have access to this epic three-part masterclass I've put together as well, then go to cleverprogrammer.com. I've put the link in the description below as well. Just click there and pop in your email. That way when my course comes out, I'll let you know, and I'll also give you access to my epic three-part masterclass. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I love your beautiful face, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.